When we write graphics programs, arrows pop up all the time. Anytime I draw a pen and paper drawing for a sketch, I usually draw lots of little arrows to show me where things are moving. We might have a game or a puzzle where clicking on the mouse causes all the shapes on the screen to move towards a common point. Or the shapes of the puzzle might explode outwards, making it easier to see them and maybe reassemble them in a new way. We might also have a game where a bunch of barriers are moving up and down, and when we press a keyboard key, a ball shoots out and goes to the right. In all of these examples, I've drawn arrows to show where things are moving. It would be great if we could translate these pictures directly into code. And we can! It turns out that we can easily implement arrows in our program and use them to do just what the pictures say. Let's see how. The basic picture for representing an arrow is that we draw it starting at 0, 0, also called the origin. Here I'm drawing 0, 0 in the middle of the screen so that we can see it. Because the arrow starts at 0, 0, we only need to save two numbers to represent the arrow, and of course those numbers are the location of the arrow head, which I'm showing here. And we can move the arrow around. Now since we're just writing x, y, we can think of the arrow's head as a point. But the trick to using arrows is not in the code. It's in our heads. We don't think of this x, y as a point. We think of it as an arrow. The x, y tells us which way the arrow is pointing and how long it is. So how does that help us move an object? Well, suppose that we have a point somewhere on the screen. Let's call this point P, so it has coordinates PX and PY. Now we know the arrow coordinates, they're shown right here on the screen, so we can draw the arrow alongside the point. And here's the beauty of using the arrows. If we add the arrow XY, here 74, 83, to the points XY, we get a new point. It's that easy. We just add the arrows X to the points X and the arrows Y to the point Y. And now if I change the arrow, I change where the point goes. I can also move the point itself and notice that it's always moving in the same direction. The arrow is a relative motion. Right now it's saying move this point down and to the left by a certain distance. If I move the arrow, so say it's going to the right and just a little bit up, then no matter where the point is located, it's going to move to the right and a little bit up. So that's the beauty of the arrow idea. By keeping just two numbers, we can always add those numbers to the location of any point to find the point's new location. We can use the same arrow over and over. Let's return to our exploding puzzle example from before, but we'll look at just one piece. On each frame, this little piece in the bottom right will move down and to the right. So we can save the little arrow I've drawn here and add that arrow to the puzzle piece's location on every frame. Then it will just keep moving with that direction and speed until it flies off the screen. Let's look at another way to use arrows that will give you much more control over how things move. I will return to our example where all the pieces fly together towards the point where we click the mouse. I'll call that point the target. Here's just one piece. What I'd like to have happen is for the piece to move quickly towards the target when it's far away, but then slow down as it reaches the target itself. I think that would look nice. To do this, we need to do three things. First, on each frame, we need to determine the arrow from the current center of the object to the target. Second, we need to make that arrow smaller the closer we get to the target so that the object moves more slowly. And third, we add that scaled arrow to the object so that it moves into position. So let's do these three things in turn. First, how do we find the arrow from the object to the target? I will assume for now that the object is represented by just a single point, just maybe the point in its center. The other point, of course, is the target. So let's call our first point P. It has coordinates PX and PY. The target, which I'll call T, has coordinates TX and TY. 
What is this arrow? The arrow from P to T. The arrow that if we add it to P will take us to T. Well, without getting into the theory, all we have to do is subtract the X and Y values of the points. The arrow's X value is given by the target X minus the point X. The arrow's Y value is given by the target Y minus the point Y. That's all there is to it. Let's give these variables names. I'll call the horizontal part AX for arrow X and the vertical part AY for arrow Y. So let's start with the easy case. I want to move from P to T. So let's put a point temporarily at P and I will add to its X and Y values the X and Y values of the arrow. So I start with PX and I just add the arrow's coordinate to it. And I do the same thing with PY. The result of adding AX and AY to P is that the point now goes right to the end. It lands right on the target. Now let's try another one. We'll go back to where we were before. I'll land a new point and I'll say this time I just want to move a third of the way towards the target. So how do I do that? Well, I just add a third of the arrow. Rather than adding AX and AY, I add a third of those values. So here at the top, you can see the code. I just add AX over three and AY over three. That brings me a third of the way along. And we could even think of this as a new shorter arrow. The horizontal extent of this arrow is AX over three. The vertical extent of the arrow is AY over three. So by scaling AX and AY, I can make this arrow shorter or longer. Let's now look at this in code. Before we dig in, I will note that there is some explicit support in processing for these kinds of ideas. They're called P vectors, but their syntax is a little weird and they take a little getting used to. So for now, we're going to do everything ourselves. Just so we know the size of our graphics window, let's get started with a normal setup and a normal draw. And the first thing I'll do is I'll create my point P. So I have to have coordinates for it. And I'll create a target point. I'm just pulling numbers out of the air. Well, now I know how to compute the arrow. It's the target minus the point. You do want the target minus the point and not the other way around. If you do get it the other way around, you'll find that your point flies away from the target and you'll realize you've got them backwards and you'll put them in the right order. Now I ask, how much of the distance do I want to move? So I'll set that to some float I'll call F. And I'll say a third of the way. Now we'll compute the new coordinates. So I'll say that the new point is called NXNY and the new X is PX plus F times AX, the scaled version of the arrow. And the new Y is the same thing, but using Y. So all I'm doing is scaling the arrows X and Y by some number called F, adding that to P, and that gives me my new point. So now I'll just add some normal drawing code so we can see these things. I'll draw the point in red. I'll draw the target in blue. And I'll draw our in-between point in white. So let's run this and see if in fact the white point is a third of the way. And it is. Now I could make these things bigger, so why don't we do that? And I'll lighten up the background. There we are. And now let's use frame count to actually move the white dot from the red to the blue. So all I have to do is change the value of F. So F is gonna be frame count times something, and it should be really small. Let's try 0 0.05. We'll see how that looks. Whoa, that was way too fast. So let's just cut that down by 10 or by a 10th. And there we are. All I'm doing is in changing the size of F. And in fact, if we made F negative to begin with, let's say minus 0.1 plus frame count times that tiny number, then the ball should start on the wrong side, and there it is, it started to the upper left of the red dot, and now it's moving down into the right. So let's look at the code again. The value here is in the concept. It's that we're thinking of AX and AY as an arrow. It's a displacement. It's how much we need to move to get to the point we want to go to. 
So by adding the arrow to the point, we're pushing that initial point in the direction of the arrow. By scaling the arrow up or down using this F business, we push the point by smaller or larger amounts. When F is small, we don't push very far at all. When F is huge, we push super far. In fact, if F is larger than one, we'll push beyond the target point. And if F is negative, we'll push away from the target point. Thinking about things in terms of arrows can often make your code much easier both to imagine and to write and to debug and to maintain. So I encourage you to get familiar with the idea of thinking with arrows.